So this Leibniz statement uh, follows uh, a particular convention. So Leibniz is a statement which is used to map two things. Uh, the software environment to the physical desktop. And that is done using this library name. So the library name is nothing but it's a alias name for a particular data set. So it's an alias name to map a physical path to the software environment. So when I say lib name stack and specify the path, so what the software knows is because there is this physical path in a given system, in a given drive, and I would always recognize this by an alias name called stat. So whenever I say stat to this particular software, it knows that it has to map back this folder path to this particular name. So whenever I create any data set in stat, it simply means I am storing, I'm creating a data set and storing it in that folder in the physical system. Now, just imagine that work all the data sets in work are created in the software environment. So obviously when I shut down the environment, those data sets get erased and a fresh set of data comes up and a fresh library comes up. But over here what I'm doing, I am being a bit uh, sly and I'm just storing all the data set in my physical folder. And every time I want to run this, every time I want uh, this physical folder back or the files in this physical folder, I'm just mapping this back to the software environment. So, and in that folder, what are the files that are being stored? Those files are being stored in a format which is compatible with this software environment. So when I'm just entering into, lib, when I'm saying lib name stat and this path, so what I simply mean is that lib name statement instructs the software to map this particular path, this particular file path with the SAS environment using an alias name called stat. So that stat is nothing but the library name. I'll just come once again on this, that a library or user defined library is nothing but, it's an alias name in the SAS environment. It corresponds to a location in the physical system. So the library name in the SAS environment would map a particular folder on the desktop to the software environment. And the function that does is known as the libname statement. Now, for defining the libraries, there must be, uh, there are a certain set of rules. The first is that the library must be one to eight characters long. Second is no special characters apart from underscore are permitted in the library name. So basically, we can always write stat underscore one but we cannot write stat like stat space one. So basically the only special character that we can actually use for specifying library names in SAS is underscore. Now post that, uh, libraries, library names can be both alphanumeric as well as numeric. However, uh, it cannot start with a numerical value. So stat one is allowed. However, I cannot write one stat. And finally, and most important, lib names are case insensitive. So this means writing stat in caps is as good as writing simple stat. Fine. Now this is how, uh, this is a very simple part that we uh, have actually worked with, right? But just now let's imagine this library creation aspect from an organizational level, right? Suppose if I go to this particular folder that I have, so just let me refer to this particular folder over here. if I go to this credit risk modeling and I go to this particular folder in the system. Now this folder contains a set of data sets which has been created for some other batch, right? 
Now, similarly, if you think about it from an organizational perspective, there are different production data sets in the system, right? In uh, the databases. Now, these are very confidential data and they have to be preserved very carefully. Now, within as a part of an operation, it might happen that if you spam error, a production. Hello. Uh, Hari, were you asking something? Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, when we are working at an organizational level, there are some production data sets, right? Now, this production data sets need to be preserved very carefully because uh, we it, it might so happen that use some kind of an analysis uh, in a part of an analysis I go and by mistake I go and overwrite the data set suppose I I need the data from that particular library so what I do is I just go to the library and I work on that data but as a part it may happen that I might alter the production data set therefore every library at an organizational level to ensure data privacy and uh, that the data the production data are not compromise with every library or the folders in different uh, at an organizational level are access protected so similarly when we are also writing SAS codes we need to ensure that we maintain those data diligence hence there are some libraries which we can access but only with a given access control and that access control is a read only control so there are libraries which we can actually access but with a read only control so <laughs> this is uh, perhaps an addition to whatever you guys have done that so after having a simple library specification the next part that we come to is defining a library with a read only access or defining access protected libraries suppose if i am actually using this particular folder path as I want to map this as a library called stat1. So what I do is I go over here, I just select this part. So you see that there is a library which has been created. So this path of the folder has been referred to as stat1. If you see this, this is the library. But how is it that I can distinguish a simple library stat with this access protected library? Now to do this, just do one thing, go to the data set and right click on the data. So when this box comes up, you will see that no option which can lead to a addition or a deletion of a data set is activated. So the first thing is new. The new option is deactivated, implying that you cannot create any new data set in this particular location. Think from a perspective of a bank, guys. When the bank data is maintained, I mean the data that the database that the banks themselves maintain, they maintain it from a very sensitive aspects so it contains a lot of sensitive information I just cannot go and create any random data set in that database therefore that folder has to be access protected and when I am actually working with it I need to ensure my validators and stakeholders of the model that I have also that by the guidelines and hence I need to make the access controls so this access equal to read only gives me a read only access and I cannot create any new data set over there. I cannot create any duplicate of an existing data set in that library. 
I cannot paste anything new in that library, nor can I rename any specific data set, nor can I delete any data set. So any action which leads to a creation, addition, deletion, or duplication of this database is actually deactivated. And the only thing that you can do is you can just access it with, you can just have a read-only access. Only thing you can do is you can either copy data sets from here, you can view columns, you can print the data sets, you can export the data sets, you can do any action outside which takes the data set outside this folder, but within this folder, you cannot just do any goddamn thing. So therefore no particular action which leads to an addition, duplication, pasting, deletion, or renaming the data set in this particular folder is not permitted. So that is what an access control library is. So and this at an organizational level needs to be adhered with uh, to ensure that you I mean your codes are or your codes are compliant with the particular data standards. Now, uh, this access equals to read-only is the option that uh, is specified for using a library with only the read-only access. Now, so as we have seen that we cannot make any change to any files which are stored in this data set. Now, the library name in the above statement has been hard-coded, right? So I have given a specific name and a specific location for this particular library. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to uh, generalize this more because uh, industry does not look at hard coding things. We look at more of an automation perspective. We look at to automate things uh, to a greater extent, right? So this library name needs to be automated. Now this library name could be declared through a SAS macro as well. So we'll just introduce the basics of a SAS macro over here and we'll see how it helps us in automating stuff. So basically what exactly is a macro in SAS? A macro is an application in SAS which helps in automating the repetitive tasks which are often performed. The, perf the purpose of the macro is to automate processes and help in streamlining business like business actions. Now macros in SAS is executed by defining macro variables, right? And these variables are tools which enable us to dynamically modify the text in a SAS program. So basically the next thing that we tend to look into is to generalize this macro process. To generalize this process of assigning library using a macro variable. Right, so uh, the question, so over here, so with this we move on to the next part, like declaring library name as macro variables. So what are macro variables? Macro variables are nothing but, say suppose I say that uh, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So over here I am hard coding both the x and y, I mean both the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. Now instead of that, what I can say is I want to find out the sum of two numbers. So every time I would not be writing 2 plus 3, then 3 plus 4, then 4 plus 5 like this. What I'll do is I'll write let s be a variable which will contain the sum x plus y. And I'll assign, keep on assigning different values to x and y. Then x and y becomes a variable. So similarly over here, this is called a macro. Or so over here we call it the macro variable, right? So a macro variable is a variable which helps us to automate repetitive jobs. Now, <clears throat> suppose I want to assign multiple number of libraries, right? Uh, now every time it becomes difficult, suppose there is a set of operations. I want to add, divide, multiply, do a number of operations on different data sets, right? Which are in different locations. So what, instead of putting in, writing out lib name, variable, the library name and the path every time, what I will do is, I will assign the library name as a particular path. I mean as a macro variable. And assign that path to 
this library, right? And every time I do this, I'll just keep on calling the library by its different name. Now suppose I want to assign the library name stat and I need to do it for different locations, right? So over there, what I need to just do is I need to declare the location as a macro variable and then call this uh, macro variable for different location and I will keep on getting back the different types of uh, macro path, the different types of macro variables. So just let's have a look into this particular thing. I'll just change this path. Hold on. Over here what I'll do is Control C on this. So over here, I am declaring the library name as a macro variable, and for doing that, what I am doing is I am writing percent let. And what I do is I run this code. So what exactly is the library path that I have assigned? So what is the physical path? So I'll use percent put and I'll check the path in the log. So the percent put gives me that the value that the macro variable is taking in a particular iteration. So Over here, now I will be assigning this name D to any location. Now, suppose I want to assign D. So, so there is basically an analysis that I do for multiple data sets or different data sets. So, what I'll do is I'll write the library name D as D and then D dot everything and all. Only thing that I need to do is I just need to keep on changing the path. And the path to which refers to D keeps on changing. So over here, what I've done is I specified LOC as a macro variable. And this is the path that I have done. And over here, what I'm doing is I'm just calling by this macro name. Just go and see that this library name has been declared properly. So the physical location to this. So D refers to this particular physical location and this library has been done. So this is how using a macro variable we define a library name the benefits of this declaration is obtained when a library name specification has to be done repeatedly for many data sets suppose uh, i am doing a univariate analysis on a set of variables for say credit cards so i just need to refer that library path as a macro variable and every time I'm doing it I'll keep on changing the library path so for example if I'm doing a data quality check exercise for three different files in three different locations, then declaring the library path as a macro variable would be helpful it would actually reduce my efforts so that is what the industry actually tries to do at every point of time it tries to actually automate processes no matter how small or how large it could be, you always try to create processes or you try to create codes where there is a sufficient amount of automation involved. So you are just macro over here. I'm just using a very, very simple example just to show how to macrotize the name of the library. So at this point, it might seem very pointless to you in doing this exercise. However, when we are doing it on a large scale, uh, where there are multiple data sets involved, there is multiple libraries involved, such an automation becomes actually very useful. And my quick